My name is Vladimir. I am a journalist. Do you willingly give your consent for the video to be published? For God's sake! Is that a yes or a no? Yes. Surname, given name, middle name, date of birth. Where are you from? Where did you live? I used to live in St. Petersburg. With your wife? Yes. Got any kids? Two. Two? Yes, minors. Children. Boys? Girls? Guys. Guys, who is the oldest among you? My oldest son. He turned 18, and the youngest is 16. An adult? Oh, yes, an adult. So it's time for SEO? No. Why? No, no, no. He has no business being here. Yes? Definitely. Well, it's bad enough my dad's a jerk. You're insulting yourself. Well, because that's the way it is. What, how and when did it happen to you? Why are you even here? Like this. I had to be present at a court hearing to settle my legal case. To the local police department. The military officer said I could face up to five years in prison. There is a way to avoid it. What court? Well, I got into a fight with my neighbor. And I've been making this proposal. You... I... I kicked his butt. His bottom? Yes. <sighs> what is it with Russians? Always fixated on details. He called me gay. He also has an obsession. There's something wrong with his head. You heard his feelings? Yes. Nothing else? Yes. Can you tell me how it happened? I'm kind of curious. What does that mean? He called me, intoxicated, and started hurling insults at me. For what? Well, how should I know? Well, he was drunk. Don't go on. He's renting a room from me. Uh-huh. And I said, I'll come right now and talk to you. I approached him and punched him in the face. He, Sasha, I apologize. I didn't know who I was calling. He began to apologize, pleading. In essence, he was in a predicament. I said, God be with you. I calm down and everything is fine. God bless you. Let's have a drink and then I'll head back to work. I grabbed the vodka, held it and poured it out. Did you get the vodka? I planned to confront him, but things turned out differently. You thought you'd bump into him in the hallway? Yes. Yes? Yes. For courage. Let's put it this way. Well, it turned out to be the opposite. That's a great plan. It turned out to be the opposite. Uh-huh. I poured vodka into glasses. Well, here you go. He looked at me and said, I don't drink with homosexuals. What should I do? I took the knife from the chair and thrust it into his buttock. In his butt? Yes. Did he stand with his back to you? No, he was sitting, but I sliced him into four pieces. Let's reenact this. I'm sitting across from you. What's next? I punched him in the side. The transcript provided is incomplete. Please yes. transcript. Yeah. Yeah. I got it. Well, the buttock. And it turned out the blade came down and cut his rear. It must hurt. That's normal. Did he yell? Well, he bled profusely. So what did you do? I called the police. Why should I hide? The ambulance and the police were called at the same time. All of this must be done simultaneously. I said yes. He had a stab wound. Both services. Yes. Well, wrapped up. Taken away. He was wrapped up. Me. That's what... I thought he was bandaged. Is bandaged a slang term? He didn't want to report me, but he was under the influence of drugs. He was taken to the hospital for tests. It turns out he was on drugs. Additionally, he was consuming vodka and, as I understood, he had mental health issues. You have another apartment in St. Petersburg, right? It's a room in a shared apartment. Communal apartments? Yes, of course. This is an entire company. Eighteen people. Eighteen? Yes, they still exist. They haven't gone away. 
St. Petersburg is the cultural capital, isn't it? It's fine. Well, I do not know. I like my communal apartment. I also live in a different communal apartment. We also have a room there. I really like where I live. We have a decent apartment, depending on the one you get. You don't just want to live somewhere, but somewhere where people are polite. A drunk tenant, despite his refined upbringing, verbally attacked you, and in response, you stabbed him. Now, you're facing trial. Yes. And you? No, I didn't go to court. And I received a proposal to shut down the business and signed a contract. Who recommended it to you? How did it occur? Military commissar. He's on duty there sometimes. In court? Department of Internal Affairs. Ravida. Yes, there are many of them out there. They assist people in avoiding court proceedings. Help? Well, let's put it this way. No, would you consider this as help? I believe there's a purge happening. They are attempting to eliminate criminals. In fact, in fact, they're just trying to refill the ranks. No. Well, of the occupying army. Look at the front line. See who is being sent there. From my draft, my draft. I... Don't interrupt me. Okay. We had a draft of 200 men. We are now leaving Kursk. Well... On buses. So? There are 20 men among these, God willing. They're under 40 years old. So? Is everyone else 40 years old or older? Do you consider that a normal army? Did I try to convince you that your army is ordinary? What do you call it? Tell me. You have an army of captives, homeless individuals, as well as all sorts of sick, lame, lewd and beggars. That's right. So everyone seems to know this. That's not what I'm discussing. I argued that this was not a deliberate attempt to eliminate the criminal element. And the criminal element refers to those people. It's easiest to send someone where they usually go. It's acceptable if they're utilized properly. But to simply perish, they discard us in there like meat. Why do you think that is? To decrease the population of Russia. Is the objective of SMO to decrease the population of Russia? So that more, so to speak, favorable people remain. Why does Russia need prisoners? Who are the favored people? The police. Police. And those who shake their heads. Those who shake their heads. Your theory is accepted. I'll pose the question. Why do Ukrainians possess every moral right? And why is it deemed acceptable to harbor hatred towards Russians? Treat them with contempt, disdain and revulsion. But why? Because we came to you, not you to us. I'm not arguing with that. I don't know the context of what was happening there, or why we invaded there in the first place. However, you've already clarified its necessity for use. No, I'm just saying. I don't understand why we're here. Not for what, but why. A common question is, why does one country attack another? I don't understand. I don't understand. A different situation? We were like brothers, visiting each other often. Poles and Germans had a brotherly relationship even before World War II. That's what I'm saying. Only God knows. I don't understand it, so I can't discuss or speculate. This is such a basic question that you don't need much understanding. Why does one country attack another? Probably to take over the territory. Why more? Who needs it? They can't even manage their own land. It makes sense. It makes sense. What is this territory used for? It makes sense. It makes sense. At least sort out your matters. What more can I extract from you? Do tell. Besides land, what else can I seize from you? Country. Why? Why does your leader need her? I don't know. Well, I mean that. The thoughts of insane individuals are difficult to comprehend. I can't discuss what I don't understand. Why should I after all? Well, look, your Putin is announcing a special military operation. 
What is he saying? Have you listened to his speech? I didn't listen. No? No. You didn't. I wouldn't be here if it weren't for, shall we say, this situation. That's all. I understand, but he said... Regarding some sort of denazification and demilitarization. Demilitarization was an attempt to disarm Ukraine. It was unsuccessful. Denazification is a struggle against certain Nazis. Have you encountered them? Well, to be honest, no. Putin compared you to Nazis. You have to go fight the Nazis. They're not here. So what's the conclusion? Well, I wasn't intimidated. That's his speech. I haven't heard about it. I'll tell you, I don't watch much TV. I didn't have time to watch TV. I was busy working. Now I'm telling you, if it weren't for this situation, I wouldn't be here. That's for sure. I'm against military action in general. What's the point of discussing something I haven't heard of? If I heard it directly from him, yes. Did you hear it from him? I'm saying that I don't know. You went to a war about which you know nothing. You don't even understand its purpose. Basically, yes. Murder? No. Did you shoot someone? I've only practiced shooting in drills. Can you tell me when you took part in the military drill? I need the month and year. October 2023. Where? For three weeks, we were taken to the firing range. Where were you sent after that? I'm already in Ukraine. We already went to the firing range in Popasna. In Popasna? What happened next? Then we went to Bakhmut. Bakhmut? Well, what happened in Bakhmut? Nothing. We have arrived at our destination. We waited for a guide to arrive and lead us. He led us to our positions and then ran back himself. At our posts, we were assigned a task. Then, we were captured. Which task? We had a dugout to occupy. Which one? We were guided by a drone. I didn't even know where he was. We were communicating over the radio. Did you follow the drone? No. They tell us on the radio, turn left, turn right. The drone doesn't fly low. It flies where you can't see it. We seized control of the empty bunker. We stayed there for a week without water, food, or combat gear. Since I had one assault rifle for two... What two for one? My partner's drone hit the assault rifle. How is that? He placed it next to the dugout. And the drone dropped a grenade. Something like that. The fact is, the assault rifle was not functional. That's why we had one assault rifle between the two of us, and three belts of ammunition. How many people? There were three of us. The third one had ten grenades, but was killed by a kamikaze drone and scattered across the field. He had ten grenades and two D-80 mines. Interesting, as you described as poetic. And he was truly swept across the field. A kamikaze drone crashed into his backpack. He has two D-80 anti-personnel mines there. And ten grenades, ten RGDs, and ten F-1 grenades. Do you think his body won't be scattered? He was only left standing on his legs, that's all. A kamikaze drone flew right into him. How far away were you from him at that moment? One hundred meters. Why are you walking so far away? Is it necessary? So we run, typically maintaining a distance of 15 to 20 meters between us. Uh-huh. And since he was already far behind, no one was going to wait for him. Why didn't anyone wait? Keep up or drop out. This. What if he had twisted his ankle? That's all. Exploded on something. In this case, he must wait for a rescue team. Shouldn't you help him? No. We're on an assignment. Do you know how many injured were left in those pits when we escaped, all pleading for help? And they shouted us, Don't approach anyone! Do the assignment. I did the assignment. Listen, you understand that this is inhumane. 
I understand. War. In a cruel regime that begins with your prisons. Where can you get hit? Beneath the bed, I'm unsure. Perhaps using sticks. As you suggested, or something worse. And it concludes with the mobilization here, where they're gathering everyone they can find and throwing them in there. And find yourself in a battle surrounded by a bunch of wounded. You're running and they tell you not to approach anyone. Our motto is, we never abandon our own. And you just abandon your comrades to their fate. The rescue team is on our tail, saving as many individuals as they can. They're doing their best to evacuate as many people as possible. You're looking at the injured. They ran ahead of us. They just didn't make it. Some of them were taken down by a drone. There are hideouts there. They take shelter. That's it. Everyone does their best to survive. How are you captured? Out of ammo, out of food. Okay. I understand you didn't have any food. Well, basically, yes. Food was stored in the bunker, in the dugout. There was food there? Yeah. There was a can of stew and half a loaf of bread. The bread that the mice didn't eat. Here, and a bottle of water. We made this food last for a week for two people. All right. And then we decided to return to our group. But instead of our guys... And the walkie-talkie? If you come back, we'll shoot you. It's not the government. This is straightforward. Is it not a state policy? No, it's over there. Putin isn't even aware of it. And if he were, would he punish them? I don't know. The Tsar is good, but the boyars are different, correct? Our implementers are predominantly Chechens. Chechens? Oh, uh, sure. And the executors of what? How can I articulate this? The sovereign's will. The will of a sovereign? Yes. What is the will of the ruler? I don't know what it's about. Come on, let's not do that. No, I don't know what it is. Well, the fact is that I was sent directly by Cha to complete the task. Cha? Yes, we call them all Chas. That's why. And Cha would have shot you? Yes. Would you come back? Yes. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. My name is Vladimir. I'm a journalist. Your husband is a prisoner of war in Ukraine. Would you like to speak with him? Yes, I want to talk to him. This conversation is intended for publication. I'll transfer the call. Sweetheart! Hi. How are you doing? A little louder, please. I'm fine, just at work. Come on, don't cry. At least I'm alive. Yeah, you've just lost weight. Lost 30 kilograms. You look thin. How are you being fed while in captivity? It's all right. I can manage. How's your back? It's okay. Elbow? How's it going? How'd it go? It's all right. There seems to be a lot of news, but... Let's not discuss the news. The main point is that you are aware I'm alive. I can see that. Exchange. Why not? Ask about the news. They promise to exchange with us in the near future. Soon. When? Spring is approaching? Who promised that? Darling, would you like to give me a birthday present? Zelensky. Zelensky made a promise. Yesterday on the news, he pledged to repatriate all Ukrainians. So we'll all return home too. This is precisely what Zelensky was discussing nearly two years ago. Let's conduct an all-for-all -all exchange. Zelensky mentions this constantly. Well, you should ask your leader, your wife. Now. There he is. Darling. Yes. Is there any news about a prisoner of war exchange? There was already an exchange earlier this month. Well. Were 230 prisoners of war exchanged? Well, yes, something like that. Uh, listen, do you have it there? 248 were your prisoners of war. 230 were ours. We also catered to 18 additional individuals who were critically sick or badly injured. There were ill prisoners of war. I heard about this too. Uh-huh. We're ready. You have access to the site there. Do you know what it's called? How? Darling, do you...
Do you know a website where POW wives can interact? Well, there's a website. I'm subscribed to it, yeah. Did they tell you I was a prisoner of war? Did they report this? I wasn't informed about anything from these sites. I mean our people. You do realize they want their men. The same workers, the same laborers who were previously sent. Those who are already fighting, I understand them perfectly. Here! No, that's not what I want to tell you. The best website and the most significant amount of information is right here, right at this moment. All I have for you and your wife is the unique algorithm that will free you from captivity. There are no other algorithms. The algorithm is as follows, and you can explain it. You hear that? If she's just going to sit around doing nothing, do nothing, then perhaps at some point you'll opt for a prisoner exchange. Understand? Yes. They rescue those prisoners of war whom they learned about from their relatives over the phone. In short, they receive calls constantly. You need to pose challenges for them. If you knew how long I've been... I'm just shaking. I call all the time, I talk about it all the time. About my husband being there, it's not right. About my husband participating in the war. He should have been hospitalized for his arm. I was talking about that. Uh huh. I'm not the silent type. The way it is? Well, then you have a chance. I was talking about that. So? Especially I have relatives in Odessa on my father's side. The only ones left alive. My husband can confirm that. We laid everyone to rest. It's been six months since we buried his father on the 1st of December. And from my perspective, I only have my husband and that's it. There's no one else. When we communicate with our relatives from Odessa, we nurture our relationships. We don't call each other often, but we did on New Year's Eve. How are you? What's new? We are even trying, we in different conditions. We attempted to maintain our familial ties even before this war started. We're all worried. How are they doing? They are concerned about us, they also called. The country doesn't matter. Kazakhstan, Ukraine, Russia, Moldova. If you have relatives, you also worry about them. I understand. I understand. Yes. And tell me, what are they saying about current events? What are your relatives from Odessa telling you? For the most part, we try to be gentle and delicate. It's just that, you have to understand, Grandma is over 80 years old. We attempt to inquire about their health, diet, retirement plans, how they celebrated the new year, and their overall well-being. Without exacerbating the situation, to prevent future health deterioration. Yes, I understand. However, the point is that from your country to Odessa itself, Shad's ballistic missiles are launched regularly. Didn't they tell you anything about that? I seldom, very seldom watch the news. I see this and it also concerns me. Tell me, why do you think this is happening? What's the purpose? I've been pondering over this for a long time. I'm uncertain. Uh-huh. So you see, the majority of people don't know. Ulan Ude, we are all together. Why argue? We are one. Kind of, it was once a unified state. What's your name? Tatiana. Look, Tatiana, what a strange situation we find ourselves in. Your husband is in our country with a gun. He was part of the Russian armed forces. Missiles are being launched from your country towards our country. I'm speaking to you, Russian. You're asking me, why argue? I don't understand why we're fighting. So instead of saying, I condemn Putin's decision. Your task is incomplete. Please provide the full text for translation correction. Putin has publicly stated that he will do so. Do you understand what's happening? And you ask, why argue? It's kind of, you know, trying to take a neutral position. Russians share one common trait. 
the inclination to maintain a neutral stance. Both are at fault, so why argue? There was no need for a dispute. But your president has announced that he will launch airstrikes against us. How do you feel about that? I do not like it. You don't like it? It's good that you don't like it because your husband does. Well, I don't think he likes it. He's all, uh... All right. Happy birthday, sunshine. It's your birthday this week. You said you like the president and his decisions. I just like the president and how he runs the country. Ah, domestic politics. Yes. And the decision to go to war? That's what I don't understand. But do you condemn it? Do you condemn the war? War, yes. Well, that means his decision in the beginning. I don't know what it was. I can't, how should I put it? Something must have triggered it somehow. Perhaps he and your Zelensky had a disagreement over an issue. I didn't even speak with our Zelensky. You think they're not communicating, but maybe they still are. Let's imagine that Putin and Zelensky are in disagreement. What does that have to do with you and me? We are expendable. You're expendable? You too. We defend our country. We do it. You have to protect yourselves from us. Yet we still manage to get in. It's hard to argue with the facts. What truly matters is that I made it through. That's the key point. Otherwise, everything is fine. Sooner or later, I will return home. We're waiting for you at home. <laughs> Bye. Come home. Don't forget about the gift. You're in charge of getting him home quickly. He can't simply depart. The responsibility lies with you. It's up to you, dear. You have to push yourself. I've done everything. Put pressure on them. Urge them. Prisoner of war exchange list. Have them put me on the list. Via the military commander. By the way, I believe the Chechen is handling the exchange, correct? It's not even on the list of exchanges. He is still on the front line. Yeah. Am I fighting? That he was being held captive, I knew that intuitively. Do you know who I am? Are you familiar with me? Do you recognize my channel? Yeah, I've been watching your channel. Go to your contact at the recruitment office and bring the video. Show him that he's in our camp and he needs to be taken home. He needs to be sent for exchange. Goodbye, my love. I kiss you. I kiss and hug you. Farewell. Look after your well-being. Bye. All right. Goodbye. I send you a kiss. I have no choice but to express it in your terms. You're here because you were compelled to come, because you... Now, all you care about is money. No, I'm interested in... Let me clarify this for you. This is a fundamental question. Why am I even struggling here? I've already asked about your objective. If it's money, why didn't you mention it? No, my personal goal is not money. I say, if it were, I would rather go to jail. Is there anything you'd like to add? The only thing is, guys, if anyone can hear me, don't even consider coming here. You don't need to. My advice.